you are now tuned into the upload. You're here with the girl D Marie and Yo Yo Launder. On today's show, we have Olympian David Oliver. But first, let's jump into our ear to the street question of the day. Hi, my name is Kenyatta. I'm from Rialto, California, currently going to UCLA. Um, I'm really broke, of course, as a college student, but I'm really into like event planning for like fashion or like different kind of parties and stuff. But I have no experience, and as I said before, I'm broke. So, what could I do to kind of start myself in this? That is such a good question. That is a great question. Definitely. One of the most important things I'd say in getting started is really identifying a mentor, somebody who you truly admire, you love their style, you love the work that they do. So really talking to them will definitely help you get some pointers on how to get started in the business. Also volunteer. Any opportunity you can get to volunteer in event planning, take advantage of it. You'll and get to see a lot of stuff. Definitely. And don't forget to start small. If your friend is having a baby shower or a bachelorette party, help her plan it. It's a great way to build your portfolio. So remember Remember, mentor, volunteer, and start small. You don't need a lot of money to get started. You don't. We hope that helps. Let us know what's coming up, how it's going. Yeah, maybe you can plan some of our parties. <laughs> <laughs> what's good, y'all? It's your boy Q. Shout out to Yo-Yo and Dee Marie for having me out here in L.A. chilling. Um, I asked my spot where to get my hair cut. They told me to check out Sephora. I heard, like, big names come through here, so we just came to see how this hot spot is. So check it out. My name is Madiri. I've been working at Sephora's eight months now, and I'm from New Orleans, and I'm the manager at Sephora's. And I'm the first one turned it into like unisex because it was a male's grooming salon before I came, and I'm the first female hairstylist with Sephora's, and I love it. You can expect to have a massage, a mani, a pedi, um, a great hairstyle. If you having a rough day, you come into Sephora's, you got the hostess to you know wait on you hand and foot, Offering you water, wine, everything. It's deeper than just a barber shop. You know, it's like a family. That's why all the celebrities from Reggie Miller, uh, Ron Ortiz, every everybody come here. Even his wife. I do his wife hair, so everybody come here. Kids, everything. It's great. It, it, it's a good feeling to be a part of a team like that. It's a great feeling. Well, you know, Yolanda, I think it's time to get started with David. David Oliver is the bronze medal recipient in the 2008 Olympic Games. He's only 28 and real close to being the fastest man in the world. Everyone, please welcome David Oliver. David Oliver, Howard University All-American. While you were in college, you ran track and you played football. When did you make the decision to pursue track over football? Oh, I always chose the... Uh you know, track over football, even coming out of high school. So, uh, you know, I wanted to play football, but I knew that, uh, you know, I, I was better in track and field, most definitely. And I'm more of an individual sports kind of guy anyway. I'm not really that big on team sports. So you like the more individualism of that sport, kind of being in charge of your own destiny? Oh, most definitely. It's all the, uh, <clears throat> all the sacrifices on you, uh -huh. all the, uh, you know, all the pressures on you. There's not four other players to hide behind and like basketball or something like <laughs> Right, right. So as an athlete, you know, you've had so many privileges. I'm sure you've cut the cafeteria line a few times. I'm sure you got a couple free homework passes from your professors and of course all of the beautiful women. Why are you so focused? How do you maintain that focus? Oh, it's easy because I like my job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy. I want to be, you know, I like running. I like to, uh, be the best and strive to be the best and you know at the end of the day I always figure if I live to be 100 years old you know my track career may be 10 12 years or something like that that's 10 to 12 percent of my life so I have you know 80 88 to 90 percent of my life to be doing other things so I can sacrifice for a little bit now to make sure my life is, in the future is set up and um, you know I, so I don't have to like really be one of those stories you hear about you know, a guy was, you know, on top of the world and he just plummeted all the way down. And, uh -huh. you know, I, I keep an even head on my shoulders. That probably came from my mom. And I, I'm a good listener, so I follow direction pretty uh -huh. well, too. So. Hmm. And that's so important. That's what we really try to emphasize to our viewers. Like, stay focused. Stay on your grind. Like, there's so many ways we can get distracted. We want to go to the club. We want to go hang out with our friends. We want to do so many different things. But it's really cool to see how you just, like, stayed on your path and stay focused. Yeah, because, of course, you know, a lot of athletes, they have to pretty much hit the rock before they realize what they had. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing that you're focused. So in 2008, you won a bronze medal in the Olympics. 
<laughs> but in 2004, you placed 20, 32 out of 32 in the Olympic trials. Um, how did that make you feel, and what kept you going? Why didn't you give up? Well, it's hard to deal with failure. You know, nobody ever wants to fail, but I think that was a plus for me because I learned how to lose before I learned how to win. Hmm. What would you say have been your three ingredients to success? The three ingredients is most definitely hard work because, you know, without that, nobody, you know, this is not our birthright. This is not my birthright to be, you know, doing well in my career path. You know, there's a lot of people that have attempted that and were unsuccessful mainly because of hard, they lack hard work. You know, work ethic is number one no matter if you're an athlete or you're a teacher or, uh, you know, just doing anything, you've got to be able to work hard. So that's, that's definitely number one. Number two, I have a great head on my shoulders. You know, I don't, you know, I don't, I just believe, you know, I stay focused just like you said earlier. I don't really, uh, you know, fall victim to like outside pressures and influences and things like that. I've never been like that. So, huh. you know, God bless me with a with great head on my shoulders. And, and third, I, I'd have to say that, that I listen very well. Uh, like if I follow direction of the people that have my best interest at heart, I can, I can, you know, if they give me a task or, or advise me to do one thing as opposed to another, I, I would take their advice, you know, so, uh -huh. and just like with my coach, you know, like I told you earlier, yeah. he had all those years of success and failure, so uh -huh. he kind of knows, so I feel I have to buy all the way into what he says in order to, you know, find, find success, and that's exactly what I did, so I got two ears, one mouth, so, you know, I listen twice as hard as I thought, so, you know, that's, that's probably the third ingredient for this. Cool. Well, what's in store for you? What what can we look out for? When it's not Olympic year, everybody wonders, like, what do you guys do? Yeah. It's just regular season. You know, that's just, instead of Olympic, we'll have world championships and things like that. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, it, this, is what, this is what our career is, 100%, is we wake up, go to practice, and then that's it. Just like, you know, if you played in the NFL, NBA, something like that, you just go to practice and you go to, instead of going to games, you know, we go to competitions, tracking over in Europe and, you know, Basically, just get paid. That's my job. Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Good luck in Albuquerque. Yes. And we wish you the best. Only the best. <laughs> yeah, you guys got to invite me back. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. We need an update. We need an update. Just contact me when I can come back, man. I like this show. Oh, wow. Thank, thank you, you so much. We appreciate that. <laughs> Right. Oh, you guys enjoy your evening as well. I'm about to watch this next Do that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. She ain't gonna tie me Ray down. J. Nah. No I boys. Mean. She ain't gonna tie me down. Like she ain't gonna tie me down. She ain't gonna tie me down. Why you on the road? Got it on the shirt, saw the hat, saw the clothes. What you want right now? What up right now? I think you need to close your mouth. Cause you ain't gonna tie me down. Situation not involving other women And it's pretty obvious that you kinda tripping Like, who the f*** is this? In a hot mess, what you felt for this chick? You know we got problems and you fail to fix it I'm like, you need to go somewhere else with this shit Because I ain't gonna put up with you Talking about